We own and vertically integrate, so we have our own capability on our head stacks in our media, which is the recording subsystem. That's our internal capability as well as our IP. Okay. We do, we've got about 52 million, 52 million I wish, 52,000 employees. <laughs> We'd be a lot bigger than 3.5 billion in revenue. All right. So, so internal storage, uh, I'm not going to go through each one of these, but from a computing to cloud to consumer, uh, you got your branded products. And then on the service side, eVolt, which is critical. And, and that's really protecting your data. A lot of us that have computers, we're at home, and we've got personal items on your computers. You could have pictures of your family, right? You can have your financials, just history. And when your hard drive crashes, not from CD, by the way, but when your hard drive crashes, you lose your data. A lot of people don't back up their data in the cloud. They don't. We've, we've got a, a greenfield company called Evo that has that capability. They will put in your residence and your company the capability to back up your solutions, which is important. All right, so what are we, what, what are we all about from a leadership model? Something? Innovative. You know, we, 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 we're leaders in IP, we're vertically integrated, which is important. Uh, we're reliable, right? We spend a lot of time on quality. Quality is supply chain. It could go from the day you select a component all the way to you ship a component, which is important. So we spend a lot of time around that. Partnerships, and I'll talk a little bit about that later. Uh, we bring the CEOs of our strategic partners in to visit with us once a year for one week. They come in, they spend a week with us. We listen to each other. And we're not the experts, right? There are certain things that they can educate us on, on what they're doing differently, how they can help support us, and vice versa. So we spend time with the executives of our suppliers. And we believe in partnership. This is a very tough business, and I'll get into that in a minute. It's a very tough, aggressive business. And anybody that ships or sells in, to the hard disk drives, they know, right? So it's important that we have partnerships. In operational excellence, it's very, very critical. I mean, like I said, we're building five million drives a week. Our yields are very high, our scrap is very low, and we're turning inventory to cash. That's what we do. Like I said, it's a tough business. You look at this technology and you buy a PC, you spend $600, right? You're getting a lot of technology. Right? And we're not able to charge for that technology. That's how tough this industry has been. And if you look at the consolidation over the last several years, when I worked at WD, there were seven players. There's three today. And it's still looking to consolidate, right? So you want to talk about complexity. Let me go back. That's complexity. Right, so we've got a lot of touch points. Our distribution centers and factory warehouses. We've got our retail distribution centers, customer warehouses. Like I said, we move 100 million kgs a year. So this is an area where we spend a lot of time on. I can give you some numbers. Uh, we were paying way over a dollar per box two years ago. Right? We're way under a dollar today. Just by the efforts of transforming our supply chain. We're doing less air, more ocean. We're doing more ocean, more truck, train. There's a lot of different venues that you can attract in driving down your logistics and your complexity. I'm just going to build it out. So this gives you a good idea. You know, acquisitions and consolidations, I talked about that. We've got three decades of steady demand growth. Right? I mean, at one point, this industry, we were building close to 70 million drives a quarter. So if you look at add up just by market share, you're talking way over 140 to 150 million drives a quarter. Right? Acquisitions and consolidations, I just mentioned that. Components and HTV manufacturer concentrated, you know, in Asia with customers located globally. It's, it's critical that we have a reach with our customers. So we have what we call CBCs, customer value centers, right? Where we've done quite a bit of consolidation of our hubs into these CBCs. We've got four around the world. 
right? Then we have to satisfy our customers. So they have JIT hubs next to their factories. And their factories could be all over the world. Right, so how do we line up with our customers, which is important. Challenging, I think you heard Kevin earlier, we've had disasters. Let's talk about the flood in Thailand. Almost devastated the hard disk drive industry. We weren't affected from our factories, our suppliers underwater. If we didn't have a balanced supply chain, I wouldn't be standing here today. We were on the verge. It was a tough, tough situation. Our, our, our competitor lost their factory, right? So because we had a balance, and there are challenges, I think you heard Kevin say that, there are challenges where you place your supply chain. But we had China, right? And, and that was a lifeline for us. And, and again, some of our suppliers in Thailand survived through that. We heard about the tsunami, same thing. We have suppliers in Japan that were affected. So really balancing that out, and it makes you think differently because our customers were affected. Remember, I said there's two and a half players now. And they were all affected by that tsunami and the typhoon tsunami and the uh, floods. So it took us time to convince them that, hey, we had a plan. We knew how to situate our supply chain and what our expectations were. Okay, but, but that almost devastated the hard disk drive industry. Manage about 4.5 billion in assets in 11 factories. And we procure about 7 billion of direct materials and 1.4 billion of indirect. And, and I'll be very frank with you. I spend a lot of time on the direct materials, right? But I don't take my eyes off on the indirect. I don't care if it's toilet paper, if it's chemicals. The things that you need to operate your facility, you pay attention to that because there's opportunities in that 1.4 billion dollars. So we pay attention to our direct, indirect, and our logistics. Very important. Let me build this out. So the need for change, you know, relentless cost pressure. We just talked about that. A lot of pressure on the consumer industry, especially when it comes to PCs. I mean, you're talking about handheld devices, right, that supposedly will take market share away from the Dells, Lenovo's, and others from a laptop PC perspective. Um, you've got Flash, your SSD product, where, you know, everybody says that your PC and laptops will go away, right? It's gonna be replaced. Not true, right? Not true. Still large storage is required. But the pricing pressure is on. Fearless competitive market. Even though there's two and a half of us, right? Aerial density is slowed down, so that's looking at your growth from you know one terabyte to one zettabyte of data, as an example. So products are lasting longer, which says that, right? How do you differentiate yourself? Supply chain is strategic. Quality is important, part of your supply chain. Those are the things that we're fiercely going back and forth against, right? Operations need to deliver and sustain margin improvements. I think you heard Kevin say that, and I'll, I'll repeat it, right? What we do differently has an impact on margin. COGS has an impact on margin. Your operational execution has an impact on margin. Right? Everything we touch has an impact on the company's performance, which is important. And we question ourselves every day. What could we be doing differently? Never sitting silent thinking that, hey, what we have today works. We're getting better. It's not that way, right? So again, our current process and capabilities are not scalable, right? And that's why we're constantly looking at complexity and, and looking at those, you know, stumbling blocks, that train wreck that's about to happen, right? We're always staying ahead of that and making those investments. So we sat back as an organization about two years ago and said, hey, we need to do things differently. We need to have the ability and the speed to make decisions within our operations, those 11 factories that you saw, when there's a demand change. And, and, and we change review demand on a weekly basis. That's how quick it is that fast. 
Every week we get a demand change. How quickly do we respond? And, and, and ladies and gentlemen, in one week we're able to turn a full cycle of a supply. We're trying to cut that down into days. All right? So when we look at that and we look at for urgency, you know, gross margin, just talk to it. Crucial important, you know, improvements in delivery performance. You know, and as, as HDD becomes increasingly a commoditized product, which it, it is today, uh, and with longer technology life cycles, as I just articulated a minute ago, it, it's important that we have that ability and speed. Uh, the competitors' capabilities and in, in reemergence in the markets, uh, we, we know who we're competing with. We know strengths and weaknesses of, as they know of us, we know of them, right? And what things that we're working on. And, and we need to strengthen our suppliers. Um, we talked about the flood, we talked about the, the tsunami. The suppliers, you know, have been impacted financially. They've been impacted with capacity. And we were there to help support. We financially provided support. That's how important these suppliers are to us. That's how important they are to you, for your success, no matter what industries you're in. We were there to help them come back, right? And there's a high regard of appreciation on both fronts. They were there for us, as we couldn't build product, couldn't support our customers, as we were there for them. So as we consolidate inputs from various sources, industry, you know, benchmarks, supply chain org imperatives, and I'll talk a little bit about that later. I talked about the CEO council. Like I said, our suppliers are that close to us. Meet with them on a regular basis. We touch each other's, you know, issues, things that we're doing well, things that we could be doing differently on, a, on an ongoing basis. We listen to our executives, right? Um, we, we all think supply chain. I mean, in, 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 you know, 10, 15 years ago, the disk drive industry was about technology. It was about, I could put a box together in seconds, right? Well, how do you do that? And it took time for people to realize that the supply chain is the heart of what we do and how we do it, right? And then we listen to our customers. There's a lot that we can do, and I think Kevin mentioned it a couple of times as he was, you know, communicating. We, we need to understand what is important to them. Because what's important to us could be different. There's a lot of areas we can align with them on as far as demand forecasting, how they pull their inventory, how we replenish that inventory, how do we use postponement strategies, right? Because again, inventory is cash. So if we had eight million drives in inventory, no matter where it is in, in, in the world, right, could we reduce that by two days, three days? And how do we do that? So clearly, you know, working with your customers are import is important, absolutely important. I need some help. Supply chain broke. Beautiful, thank you. So this, this is a little bit about the transformation. And, um, you know, guys, I'm talking, there's a lot that I'm not going to be able to communicate because there's a lot of confidentiality in what we're doing and how we're doing it and the tools and the companies that we've engaged. I'm going to try to touch on it, right? So we started, you know, May of 2012, a little before that as far as talking about the architecture. architecture. Uh, we launched this across all of senior management. So we have a website, right? I'm constantly in front of all of the executives at the design centers and of our factories. I'm in front of my team. And we've got over 1,100, I've got a little over 1,100 employees, right? And I'm involved with the finance organization. So everybody tops down from the CEO down, right, is sponsoring this initiative, okay? So we start the transaction, we go transformation management. So we, we, we have a transformation office. So I've got probably five or six folks that are part of this office. And what they do, right, is they're working with the, tra the tr we call them tracks, the different transformation teams within our company. And the company's big, 52,000 people. Very cross-functional. We have IT, we have finance, we have supply chain operations, quality. Very, very cross-functional, right? We collaborate. We're looking at inventory management. There was a track on that. There was a track on commodity team, commodity councils. So we look at things that can influence the speed by which we make our decisions, and some of the tools that we're doing. How do we measure? Metrics are important. Too many 
people don't pay attention, don't look. What are the metrics that make a difference in your company? Those are the ones we ought to be paying attention to. Right? So we collaborate. Right? So projects attract and institutionalize. I meet with the teams right? once a month, once a quarter. It depends on the, the, the grouping or the forming of the team, how they're progressing. Some teams we've already institutionalized and getting significant benefits. Public knowledge. Last quarter, we did about 12.4 inventory turns. A lot of what happened then was part of what these teams did. And 12.4 is substantial. It's millions of dollars in our business. Millions. Okay. And we get a few kudos from the streets as well, from a management of cash, DSOs, things of that nature. So we track them very closely. Simplification and supply flexibility leverage global suppliers. So as I said, we are working closely with our suppliers to help them. So we can call them tiger teams. We can prioritize our suppliers. We, you know, we, 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 we identify who they are and we engage. Could be in a number of areas. Sending in lean manufacturing experts, right? Looking at their financials. What are we doing in the quality space? You know, they might have to relocate. As Kevin just said, depending on where your factory is. Are they willing to do that? What are our options? These are all things we're looking at here. When we looked at postponement in, in IT infrastructures, this industry for the last 30 years has been on spreadsheets. That's what the buyer planners do, spreadsheets. They build them and they execute from them. And if you could bottle that, if you could bottle that, You'd put guys like Oracle out of business, SAP out of business, from an ERP perspective. That's, that's how important these, these spreadsheets and what they have built in databases. We're working around that now. We're starting to systemize what we're doing. We've got an approach. We've got a partner. Some of those things are going to add significant benefits to us. Significant from a speed perspective. Okay? So postponement, I, I, I talked to that. Right? How do we move our freight at the, at the most cost-effective points? How do we do that? And still not impact our customers on what they pull, what they expect to have, and they, their, day sales of out, their days of outstanding sales, right? what they can count on in inventory. How do they do that? So we've been able to, to master that. We're improving. We're not there yet, but we are improving. Right? And then the, you know, it, 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 it'll never go away. I can't state that enough. Transformation never goes away. And I think from a leadership, from our board of directors, through our leadership team, down to who touches every component. And by the way, it's important that we all realize our assets are our people. Our people are what makes the difference. So it's important that they're part of this. And when you go to the factories and you see the excitement around what they're capable of doing, the entitlement that they have, how they execute, pretty meaningful. It's not about me. It's not about my leadership team. It's not about the CEO. It's about what we do and how we do it, right? So people make a difference. So flexible supplies, faster response, and of course your revenue grows. And that's the way we need to differentiate ourselves with our competition. Because like I said, we're about 43, 43, and there's a third supplier that carries the rest from a market share perspective. Okay. These are some of the tools that we've implemented, and, and, and trust me, we pay attention to them. They're imperatives. These are, these are measurements that we, as an organization, as a company, right, get our bonuses based on, right, any type of increases within the year. These are all corporate initiatives, right? So we have the dashboards, we have the metrics, Transformation organization, as I talked about earlier, the capability timeline and your overall capability, short term, long term. And by the way, we don't have a hundred different pieces of paper that we look at every week. It's a handful. It's a handful. Our meetings, we've reduced. We've reduced the number of our meetings. Non productive. Right? So, what do we need to do? Again, transforming how we behave as a company. I mean, we could all be sitting in rooms 10 hours a day, right? Not productive. So what we're doing is looking at what metrics do we need? What are we trying to measure, right? And is it going to make us successful as a company through our supply chain? 
All right, so this just gives you a few ideas of what we're doing uh, at Seagate. So you've heard probably a lot about the bullwhip effect. This bullwhip effect, it's not only in how you deal directly with your suppliers, it's how the customer deals with us, right? How engineering deals with us, how quality requirements from reliability, and then how we deal with our suppliers. It's an end-to-end, -end, right? So what do, what do we try to do, right? Small changes in demand have a bigger impact upstream into the supply chain. Demand swings amplify distorted information to suppliers. Distorted planning, it's, it's a nightmare, right? Then we create it. Customer initiates us, and then we drive the rest of that behavior. These are areas we're paying attention to. This is the collaboration we need to do with our customers, right? How do we affect how they think from the standpoint of how they drive their demand? How do we set inventory levels in their JIT hubs? What do we set in our CBCs, as I explained earlier? Right? How do we reduce this bullwhip effect? Because every time you have one of these tails, it's money, it's dollars. It's dollars. Every time you touch this, it's money. Right? So how do we do that? Just set it, end-to-end -end information, more quickly, accurately, and frequently. It's all speed. It's all velocity, but you have to, right? You have to understand what your effect is from your end-to-end -end supply chain. All right, so the achievements in the first year, I'll build it out. You know, financial progress, making good headway towards goals to significantly reduce working capital and operating costs. Reduce logistics total spend. I gave you a little bit of an idea of where we're at, but 27%, significant. Significant. DHL is right outside the door. Big, big partner to us. Huge. Huge. Uh, making progress towards significant costs, you know, significant total cost savings. So like I said, you know, when you look at COGS, there's quite a build up there. The factories have responsibility. Your direct material, indirect material, and logistics. We all play a role. We all play a role. And by the way, we don't look at the end of the quarter and say, well, that didn't work. You didn't deliver. There's none of this. We're all one. One can't make the target, whatever that might be. We're there to help support in another area. Right? Operational progress and material returns improved. I just talked to you about that. And then order to delivery cycle shrunk from weeks to days. Our job is perfect order. What is perfect order? That's one of our initiatives as far as the metric. What is perfect order? Customer request it in a hub, we place it in the hub, it's there to be pulled. So, so how do we do that? How do we build a 95% perfect order? A lot of work in your systems, which are your tools, how you communicate, how you execute, how you plan as a company. That's one of our initiatives. And it's very high as far as any type of you know, payout and, uh, and bonus and or salary. That's how important it is to the company. Right? So capabilities, progress, co-planning to improve forecast accuracy and product standardization um, and improve supply chain flexibility. I talked about that. Software implementation to automate, simplify, and speed of process. This is huge. This is going to be a differentiation for us. Big. Big. And then better controls on purchasing processes. We are spending time with our employees. We're encouraging them to continue with their education. Could be in Apex, could be in supply chain logistics. We are paying for that. Like I said, people are an asset. They're that important to us. That important. All right, I can't say enough. I, I, can, I can go through each one of the, you know, the quad, uh, but supply chain subject experts, uh, we have quite a few of those. We've got people that have been in the industry for 30 years that bring a lot of value. They understand it, all right? Um, we have Stanford, you know, executive training. We, key certifications, I just talked about APEX and uh, SCOR. Communication and feedback. I communicate. I just did a video the other day for my organization. 
I'm out there, do a lot of travel, get in front of them, tell them what's going on, what are we doing differently, why are they so important, what role do they play, right? So we're in front of them. And then skills development and then performance goals and evaluation. We all need goals and objectives, right? But they've got to be measurable. We don't need 20 of them. We need five. What makes a difference, right? And be flexible. That's important. All right, so you always have lessons learned, right? Let me build it out. So the time to start is now. You know, you're, you, you feel unhealthy. You might be, you know, you feel like you're overweight. You go to your doctor, takes your blood pressure. He says, you've got a choice, right? Clean it up, start exercising, go on a diet, whatever you need to do, but clean it up. Or there's ramifications. It's the same thing here. Same thing here. Increase customer supplier collaboration, I told you. CEO councils, we're in front of our customers, we're talking to our suppliers, not the, only the leadership. We get down to the operators, the people that are touching, right, the product. Right? We enable responsiveness and resistance. We're not always right. We're, we're, we are the customer, but we're not always right. So we need, we need to listen, right? And then simplify the message and communicate often. I just said that. Just said that. You know, to have a website, how many people hit that website? Employees, they, they don't always go online. So it's important that we're in front of them. It's important that we're sharing with them, and, and they're a part of the solution. So, you know, what, what I'd like to have you take away today um, is the leadership aligning to manage the business, running with less and more coll uh, collaboration, risk management. We talked about the tsunami. We talked about the floods. It's risk management. And then spend some time with the people. That's what makes a difference. Okay? Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Uh, um, very impressive uh, what CK has done. And uh, I think you have indicated that um, you have managed to reduce distribution costs by 27% per unit. Can you give us some example of what exactly uh, CK has done? We, we looked at working with our partners. It could be DHL. There's a number of, of freight forwarders that, that we engage with. And looked at different ways of moving our product, depending on what the product is. I mean, so we've got a mission critical product, an enterprise, we've got personal computer. And so when we look at that, looking at where our customers are, there were decisions that needed to be made. And you know, it's easy to put things in the air when, when you're not predictable. Uh, and that's what we were doing. And so we sat back and said, listen, we're going to have trade-offs. We're going to trade inventory turns for ocean. So for personal storage group and maybe for some business critical, we're going to put that on the ocean. And, and we're going to sacrifice that. Now, how do we do that? It's better planning, better execution, right, within our operations. So we put more on the ocean. We use trucks from Shanghai to Hong Kong from a cost perspective. It's cheaper to go truck to Hong Kong and ship out. So we looked at all lanes. We looked at where our hubs were, how we were going to pull our inventory. And we, we, we got a lot smarter on looking at all our alternatives to moving our freight. And we're using that today. So a good portion of those 50, 60 million drives that I talked about go on the ocean. And it's a four week sale to the US, as an example. You know, and a big part of where our product goes is into Asia, northern part and southern part of Asia. We use a lot of trucks, right? We, we use ferries. We put stuff on ferries, right? So we spent the time to understand all of our touch points with our customers and our logistics providers were there to help us through that, to look at alternatives. And, and we've been successful with that. Like I said, we were paying way over a dollar a box and we're way under a dollar today. Even looking at fuel surcharge oil. So it's planning. A lot of planning and really working with your logistics providers. I hope that answers your question. Um, a, a question on the last year. It looks like you've made, via that transformation slide, a lot of progress in the last year. Um,
typically though there, there's always like one or two areas that uh, are sticklers or are head scratchers in terms of uh, not, not able to have progressed as, as much as you would have liked. Um, could you talk to that a little bit in terms of maybe one or two of those areas that uh, maybe you underestimated how, how much work it would take or communication to, to move the ball forward? The efforts to use a canned tool, canned software, with the partner that we engage with. And, and it takes developing your business processes to be able to engage with a third party. Uh, some underestimated that. I think the challenges were as well are the people. I've been using spreadsheets for 30 years. You want to do what? You want to change me? And it works? And we're profitable? And you want to change? Why? Why do you want to do that? It's transformation. And, and a lot of folks had a hard time with that, right? So we needed to get in front of them. We needed to listen to them. So we've been running simulations for the last year, bringing in key folks from around the world, putting them in conference rooms, and listening to them looking at what they could be doing differently, speed, accuracy, commit, and you know the intricacies of building a spreadsheet, I mean, I'm telling you, it'll blow you away. It'll blow you away. You're on Wall Street. That's how, that's how impactful they are. Now I'm gonna do away with this tool, I'm gonna implement this one. So it's really, to me, it's, it's working your business processes, understanding the folks that are executing, and listening to them to make sure you've captured all those intricacies, right? And then coaching and driving change. We're not going to do the big bang. We're going to take one product family. Because if we do a big bang, I might be here in a year from now going, didn't work. So we're going to do it one thing at a time. But understand people, understand the change, and making sure they understand the impact. Hopefully that answered your question. You're welcome. Um, I'd like to understand if uh, this um, optimization is internally led um, by the team in Seagate or in collaboration with an external party um, that they provide consultation for. My second question is, does this involve um, the other multifunctional teams, basically finance, sales, and um, how do you engage them into buying into this idea of big change? Um, and they brought value more from a textbook perspective, I'm being honest with all of you. Uh, and I've been with the company for four months now. So when I came on board and did an assessment, uh, it was time to pull the needle. Right? And, and what I mean by that, it's time to let go and take on that ownership. So there's one project today that we're still engaged with a third party, and we'll be rolling them out probably middle of, we're, in our, we're going into our new fiscal year, 14, middle of the fiscal year, we'll be done. We have the ownership. It's very cross-functional to answer your question. Like I said, finance representation with the leadership driving change, right? Quality, engineering. We have four different development centers, okay? Each one has a different VP that heads it up. So they're all involved with the transformation. Myself, I'm, I'm champion, right? The CEO down, involved, talking about it. It's that important. So it's very cross-functional. We don't have 10 teams, guys. We've got less than five. But we have an impact, okay? Uh, why does everybody want to participate? Why do they believe it's important? Uh, why do they believe it will have an impact? Well, you know, when you, when you have a turn of inventory, it's millions of dollars. When you're able to have product at a hub where a customer can pull it, and your competition is struggling, that's important. When you're able to communicate internally, speed of decision making, that's important. When you're able to answer questions for finance, right, on, on inventory, logistics, replenishing, options on postponement, they're happy. Engineers, they're tough. They're tough. They're hard to please. You got to get in front of them. Showing them that, hey, by understanding roadmap and the influence of complexity, SKUs, SKU management. I don't know how many here have you know, one product of 35 SKUs. You're looking at it, right? No longer, right? We're going to have two SKUs, not 25. Why is it, right? Where's the value of doing that? 
You start in product development, what does it hurt you the most in your factories? Right? You've got to avoid them. So it doesn't take a lot. Well, let me step back. Bite my tongue. It takes a lot to convince and sell, right? And then it takes a lot to manage and measure. But your results speak for themselves. And they're not overnight. They are not overnight. So it takes time, and it takes influence, and it takes commitment. Okay, any other questions? So can you ask that question again, please? Well, we have done it in the Yeah, I'll be honest with you. I think what he's asking, would we have done anything differently? Uh, no. I think um, by getting the executive sponsorship, um, by educating the organization, right? I think we did it right, and, and we're getting the results. In less than a year, we've commercialized a few of these tracks. Uh, we're on schedule. Uh, the question that was asked, you know, uh, what would we have done differently or learned through this process? There's a lot there that I'll always remember, right? And, and learn how to do. But, but I'm going to stress it one more time. It's people. It's, you know, we're, we're not a machine. I mean, we're pumping out drives you know, in seconds. But it's the people that are behind that. So if they understand, they're bought in, they're excited, they want to see you know, that improvement, and they want to see you know, Seagate be the leader in technology, innovation, they're there. That takes a lot, right? It takes a lot. All right, hey, thank you very much for your time.